Hello, everyone. I'm Travis Markwood with the Lancaster Fairfield County Chamber of Commerce, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today for the 2020-2021 Fairfield Leadership Virtual Project Presentations and Program Completion Recognitions. While we are certainly beginning to uh, get back to in-person meetings and events, we felt that uh, an effort of this size was best done virtually. However, we are looking forward to seeing our members and our community partners very soon. Before we get to our presentations, I'd like to take a moment to thank each of our organizations that have sponsored a participant in this year's program. We very much appreciate it and truly believe that your support is helping to create future leaders for our community. We are presenting today from the Fairfield County Workforce Development Center, so I'd like to thank the county uh, for hosting us today, uh, Rick Zabrak and Doug Durrett, uh, who uh, work here to prepare the facility uh, for our event today. Also want to take a moment to thank Cheryl Barber, our member services director uh, for the uh, chamber, for all the hard work that, and dedication she puts into managing um, the details and communications for the Fairfield Leadership Program. She does a wonderful job and we really appreciate her efforts. A big thank you to our uh, video production partners today, Interface Video, uh, who are streaming live today so that you could all tune in. I also wanted to thank our guest speakers uh, throughout the year that took time to present uh, our different leadership training topics this past year. Uh, Wendy Travis from Fairfield Medical Center presented our Strength Finders program. Matt Weidman from Fairfield Federal pre presented our Crucial Conversations training. David Uhl from Fairfield DD uh, presented the question behind the question. And Ron Collins from Ohio University Langster uh, presented best practices in public speaking. So we really appreciate their time uh, and dedication to our program as well. We would like to thank uh, our volunteer facilitators for the program, David Uhl and Ron Collins. Uh, they've been helping with the program for many years and we certainly appreciate their assistance and guidance uh, for our participants. Finally, I'd like to take a moment to thank those who have participated in this year's program and for taking the time with us each month to take a half day from their work uh, and responsibilities. I'm very proud of how this group was able to adapt during a very difficult year. A big benefit from participating in Fairfield Leadership is the new relationships that are formed with your peers. Being virtual for the program, this made uh, that very difficult this year. And uh, however, uh, we are planning to wrap up this year and hoping to have one final networking event uh, where our participants will have the chance to get to want, uh, know one another a little more. The Chamber of Commerce believes that volunteering and giving back to the community is a very important part of being a community leader. Therefore, each year we invite a nonprofit organization to apply to the leadership program to get assistance from one of our leadership teams on projects and initiatives that support their organization. We build small work groups, four to five leadership participants are assigned uh, in them to each nonprofit, and they work on projects uh, in, with that organization starting in November and typically ending in April. Uh, you will see at the upcoming presentations the relationships that are built with these nonprofits and their Fairford leadership teams often go beyond the program year and end up in long-term volunteers and even on board members. Let's take, uh, let's take a look at some of the great work that the 2020-2021 Fairfield Leadership Participant, Participant excuse me, uh, provided with some of our local nonprofits. Thank you again for joining us today, and don't forget to check out our new leaders in the community. It's a great day to volunteer for Habitat for Humanity. If you have ever built a house, worked on a house, or wanted to work on a house, Habitat provides a wonderful opportunity to do that. And here's our crew to present Habitat for Humanity in Fairfield County. I'm Linda Berge Disser. I'm the City of Lancaster, sorry. I'm the City of Lancaster Community Development Director. This is Jordan Orr. She's with Fairfield Homes. Sierra Heilman is with Cryo Communications. Jennifer Simons with Matt Taylor Kia, Amy Cohen with Fairfield Medical Center Foundation, and Jennifer Bosker with Griswold Home Care. Habitat for Humanity is a global organization using volunteers to build homes for people in need. The families participate using sweat equity, and then they have a home loan at 0% interest. 
Our chapter of our local chapter of Habitat here in Fairfield County was very successful for many years and had a strong following. However, recently you may have read that the organization drifted from its mission slightly and when they invested in the Miller building, hoping to restore it as a haunted house. That project didn't turn out to be successful and sadly the organization uh, had to downsize and pass the management to the Southeast Ohio Habitat Office in Athens, which actually serves eight other counties as well. Well, um, the good news is we still have our ReStore on Slocum Avenue and they are receiving um, donations and selling home goods and building supplies. We have a staff person who's dedicated to Fairfield County and we have uh, all donations, all funds that are raised here stay here. However, there is no donor database. There is no more, uh, there's, we no longer have a cadre of volunteers. Um, there is partial funding for one new build in Pleasantville this year, and there's a plan for one new build in Lancaster next year, but the funds need to be raised. So our challenge, rebranding Habitat for Humanity in Fairfield County. To renew a positive image, have a healthy roster of donors, a robust stream of, re of reliable volunteers so that more families can have a safe and quality home. All right, so the approach that we um, started with was to create and conduct a market research discovery process, um, re recruit people from the discovery process to join Habitat's Community Engagement Committee, start a donor and volunteer database, and develop a rebranding strategy. So with gathering research, um, where we really wanted to start was figuring out what kind of approach we wanted to take. Um, so we did this through individual contributions within our team, um, interviewed individuals, and we also did group and interviews as well. Um, we created a survey on the perceptions of Habitat for Humanity. And then we also um, did a deeper analysis with a SWOT analysis. So just to take a look at the survey questions that we used, um, we had introductory questions, exploratory questions, and ending questions as well. And just some examples was, what was or is your relationship with Habitat? What do you think is the current perception of Habitat? And what will it take for Habitat to succeed in Fairfield County? We had 60 plus individuals respond um, within Fairfield County and the consensus was that a market strategy was needed and a known presence is needed as well outside of just the restore. And with our analysis, um, we took a deeper look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and this, one of the strengths was um, they do have a presence already established in Fairfield County with the restore. Um, a weakness is the marketing could be better, um, and the volunteer and donation volunteer and donation base is a little weak. Um, opportunities was to hold community events, promote the restore uh, store, and increase awareness in Fairfield County through multiple marketing platforms. And then a threat was um, for-profit housing developments increasing. So a lot of the vacant lands or properties where you could do a build um, are being taken up by other, um, pro other companies with um, developments. And now to Sierra to talk about the marketing plan. So our next step was to take all of our findings to create a marketing plan that would help us reach our goal of rebranding Habitat in Fairfield County. We narrowed down four key audiences to focus on, which would be the volunteers, the donors, the local organizations and businesses, and churches. We then drafted some key messages that would provide consistent language when speaking about these different audiences. For example, this could be the type of language um, someone could use to encourage volunteering via social media or talking to someone. Habitat for Humanity volunteers create immeasurable change in the community through the tireless dedication and sweat equity they graciously provide for the betterment of their fellow neighbors. Together, we can make a difference in our community. So now that we know who we are trying to reach and what we're trying to say, we created some overarching strategies that would help us 
understand what we're trying to accomplish through this plan, which are to build public awareness and engagement through an online presence, communicate the value of Habitat for Humanity, increase fundraising outre outreach and opportunities, create goodwill for the role of Habitat for Humanity um, in the community, and aid in the development of Habitat for Humanity and their partnerships with, sorry, with community members. Um, and now I will let the rest of my team explain the tactics that will help us accomplish those strategies. While creating or while putting together our marketing plan, we discuss what marketing tactics would be most effective to get the word out that Habitat, Habitat Fairfield County is back. <clears throat> we first looked at what internal resources we could create that would really provide a jump start for the newly hired director. The two internal com components we focused in on were appoint a community engagement committee and start an ongoing database. Uh, during the discovery process, as mentioned uh, before, we conducted interviews with community members who were an integral part of Habitat Fairfield County previously. We determined that these individuals were a great place to start building the community engagement committee to work alongside the director to start putting our marketing plan into place. The next step was the, to start the ongoing database. We also learned that Habitat Fairfield County didn't have a current database for volunteers who donated items at the ReStore, time for building projects, or businesses who don donated funds, materials, or personnel to complete projects. This knowledge prompted us to create a database to house volunteer and business information. We started this database with the individuals that were interviewed, took the chamber survey, and of course everybody on the team. The next step, um, the second marketing tactic we explored was digital marketing. Digital marketing is one of the most important pieces of a marketing plan in 2021. Habitat of Fairfield County does currently have a Facebook page, um, they have an Instagram and a Twitter account. Um, this is a huge opportunity to gain traction via posting regular Habitat content, including um, videos, photos, events, and using targeted Facebook ads to get the community involved in everything Habitat Fairfield for ha the ha Habitat Fairfield County. We think that leveraging videos featuring our influencers in the community could also be helpful, helpful to gain interest and trust. The recommendation of a tab on the Southeast Ohio Habitat for Humanity website was also made. We realized we realize the resources to create a Habitat Fairfield County site would be too great. The tab on the current website would provide Fairfield County residents easy access to events and volunteer, volunteer opportunities in Fairfield County. We also suggest creating a digital newsletter that can be delivered via email to the community members who are part of the newly created database. And here's an example of our Facebook ad that we would use um, to, cre for, to create uh, volunteers. So as we've already discussed, one of the major challenges is that in Fairfield County, people just have forgotten about Habitat. Um, and therefore they have moved on to other nonprofits to uh, give their donations and their volunteer hours. One way to combat that is through grassroots efforts. And that can be through um, speaking at various community events, participating in community organizations in their meetings, um, and we also feel they should be utilizing the ReStore more. Uh, Ken has already started speaking at different community organizations, and from what we've heard, it's been very positive. It's already gathered people that are interested in volunteering and maybe making donations. We have put together a list of possible organizations um, that he can con continue speaking at, as well as contacts where we have them. Um, they include, but certainly aren't limited to, Kiwanis, PRGL, um, high school organizations that need to do volunteer hours, real estate groups, church leadership, um, and builders and contractors. So we are hoping, um, with our help, he can continue those efforts. 
Um, it's also important to participate in the community. And really, this can be as simple as for a very nominal fee, renting, renting, uh, getting a table at different events and getting out there and shaking people's hands and speaking to people about, um, about our passion. So some of those ideas are the chamber annual meeting, the Love My City event that's coming up, South End Community Gardens, older adult network events, and there are many, many more in the community. Finally, we feel they should um, utilize the ReStore more. The ReStore has made many improvements over the past several years, and in addition, people just don't know about the ReStore. So we recommend that they do an open house sometime in the next couple months or within the next six months. In addition, we feel they should be utilizing the ReStore more for collection of information. Uh, people that are in the ReStore obviously have an interest in Habitat because they're there. So why not collect their names and contact information that we can then use um, to uh, send information to. Um, finally, crucial for all these activities is either disseminating information about Habitat oops, or um, collecting information. Habitat as an organization has many marketing materials and brochures that we can take to different speaking engagements, to different um, community organizations. We can also put them at the ReStore on the counter. Uh, however, what was missing was a, a card or a way to collect the data from people that have expressed interest in learning more about Habitat. So we developed a volunteer card that we can take to those presentations and leave. People can fill it out with their information, their contact information, and then we can contact them later and um, put them on the database as well. Jennifer will now discuss print opportunities. Like my teammates said, our focus was on rebranding and bringing awareness to Habitat of Fairfield County. <clears throat> Along with the other suggestions that were previously mentioned, we also suggest that Habitat for Humanity of Fairfield County take advantage of print opportunities such as researching local news outlets and reporters to create a media list to send all press releases. We suggest that they include the Chamber and Destination Downtown newsletters. Draft press releases to announce anything newsworthy, such as announcing a new director and committee. Even small news can gain traction and further their goal of increasing awareness and participation from the community. Advertise in local media outlets, such as the Lancaster Eagle Gazette and Town Crier. Draft routine articles that are creative and captivating to share with local news outlets and on various social media platforms. This is an example of the volunteer card that was created for the ReStore to gather the information of the patrons so that we can add those to our email list. Thank you. I'd like to say congratulations on completing the Fairfield Leadership Program. Good afternoon and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, the project our group was assigned to manage this year for the Fairfield Leadership Program was to work with Executive Director of the Lancaster Festival, Deb Connell. Deb was uh, looking for an exciting and community involved way to promote and raise funds for the annual Lancaster Festival and all of the events that take place over the nearly two week festival event held every July. Since 1985, the Lancaster Festival has delighted Lancaster with nearly two full weeks in the summer of a variety of music, arts, and entertainment all around the area. Each year, nearly 75 events, there we go. Each year, nearly 75 events are held during the festival with many of the events being free of charge. Some events of years past have seen performances by the Beach Boys, uh, Sarah Evans, and Kenny Rogers. And every year, they also host the annual, or the Lancaster Festival Art Walk which opens up to downtown historic Lancaster. It's a great opportunity to see beautiful chalk art designs along the downtown sidewalks, 
during the day, and then at nighttime, you might enjoy hours of live music, great food and entertainment, and a family fun environment. There are so many other exciting events for kids and families of all ages that take place during the festival each year. Well, so Deb challenged our group to come up with a way to incorporate the continuous generosity of Lancaster's local downtown businesses and community with a mix, or I'm sorry, with local downtown businesses and community and mix that with a fun-filled day of giving to help raise funds which would support the great events of Lancaster Festival. Our plan was to invite um, local businesses to participate in this fun, in this um, event. Um, I'm sorry, got confused here. Uh, our plan was to invite local businesses to participate in this fun and exciting giving event. In addition, we would plan and coordinate a drive through event at the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services parking lot on a designated day. Well, then Deb also challenged our group to come up with a fun and exciting name for this day of giving event. And then after some back and forth discussions with Deb and our leadership team of five, we would like to present to you our original concept of the first annual Lancaster Festival Fund Day. So now let me hand it over to Jennifer to discuss in more detail our scope of the Fund Day project. All right, thank you, Lori. So the Festival Fund Day was going to take place on April 24th of 2021 from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in historical downtown Lancaster. There was going to be free giveaways, a drive-through drop-off donation area, as well as a chance for one donor to win the grand prize of a table at the grand finale concert. While we would have been raising funds for the festival, we had hoped to drive downtown communities, um, businesses, to the local businesses. The proposed ways downtown businesses could join in the event were planned to be on the 24th, um, the businesses could have customers round up their purchases to the nearest whole dollar or have donation boxes at the businesses for customers to give. Businesses could pledge to donate 10% of their sales during the event, or they could become an event sponsor for that day for $250 or more. There would also be ways that businesses and individuals could participate online, and during the event, we plan to use flyers with coasters with QR codes to direct people to the Lancaster Festival website, and once there, they could learn about the festival and activities, as well as how to donate. There was also a possibility we could utilize a text to give option for people as well. All businesses that donated would or participated would be acknowledged on advertisement banners, t-shirts, billboards, and digital marketing promoting this event. We hope the staff of the businesses that were participating would wear Festival Fun Day t-shirts the day of the event to help promote as well. Marlene will now talk to you about how we came up with a timeline to manage the tasks. So uh, the team narrowed down the scope of uh, work to four fundraising efforts geared towards the downtown local businesses in the community, um, which are, are shown here in the presentation. Our next step then was to develop a fundraising letter for the downtown businesses to gauge their interest uh, and commitment to participate. And some enticements for those businesses was their names were gonna be included on advertisement banners and digital billboards during the Lancaster Festival. Um, as well as to increase the business traffic during the Festival Fun Day event. With the letter complete, uh, which uh, a sample letter is shown here, uh, basically outlining what Jennifer just uh, uh, kind of like mentioned a little bit ago uh, of uh, ways to donate and also the enticements for the businesses. So with the letter complete, we shift our focus uh, to come up with a way to attract the community to participate in the event with the you know, current restrictions, the logistics for the donation drop-off, volunteers, entertainment, marketing and giveaways for the Festival Fun Day schedule on April 24 of 2021. Uh, unfortunately, uh, at, uh, through our work, uh, David shared that the Lancaster Festival Board decided to postpone the Festival Fun Day event to April 2nd of 2022, as their focus needed to be with the Lancaster Festival in 2021 to work on logistics as a result of the restrictions, at which time they have then challenged us to develop a framework to help prepare a future event and how this may look like uh, within the next year. So. Um, 
So here, basically, what we come up with as a team was to develop a framework in a form of a checklist to help summarize and organize activities for the upcoming Festival Fun Day event uh, scheduled in, in April 2nd of 2022. This included critical steps month, months in advance of the event to help prioritize efforts not limited to only business partnerships, but also develop marketing strategies, secure a venue, recruit volunteers, uh, collect raffle items, uh, giveaways, just to name a few. Um, we came up with a few ideas for the outlook of this event, including the area map that you see here, basically to showcase uh, in the website and with flyers to help attendees locate uh, participating businesses for the Festival Fun Day event, uh, event venue, and other critical needs in the area. Now Alyssa will dive into some of the outlook of the Festival Fun Day scheduled now on April 2nd of 2022. After hearing the Festival Fun Day was pushed back to 2022, we were relieved, mostly because we were able to focus on a day that didn't revolve around this past year's orders and regulation. Looking ahead to our ideal fun day, imagine being in a crowd once again, seeing new and familiar faces. That's right, I'm not talking just eyeballs, I'm talking full faces. As a once familiar environment puts a smile on your heart, you finish up another treat of your, from your favorite food truck. You swear, it's the last one. Drawing your focus to the local band on stage, Deb walks out and introduces for the, the first time this year's grand finale performer. In walks ACDC. Okay, so I drifted off a little bit, but to help us get back to reality, here's Nick for our final disclosures. Uh, thank you, Alyssa. Um, as you have seen over the course of our presentation, our group had to change focus from the initial scope of the project from helping plan and prepare a Festival Fun Day event in April 21 to focusing on laying the groundwork by building a solid foundation for the Lancaster Festival to build upon for the event to happen next year and the years to come. We are off to a great start for next year. However, there's still much to do in order to make this event possible and bring a day of fun to the community, which will require the help of volunteers and your support. We encourage you, your employer, if you know someone who would like to be involved either as a volunteer or sponsor to the first annual Festival Fun Day to please reach out to the Lancaster Festival. If you are interested, there is a volunteer form online. Stay tuned as there will be more information to come in the following months. Um, exciting things with the Lancaster Festival are on the horizon. The Lancaster Festival that we all have loved to come to love and enjoy will be back this summer promoting artistic creativity and growth, starting with the Art Walk on Friday, July 23rd, and running through July 31st with concerts by Dancing Dream and Abba Tribute, the band Perry and Don Felder, formerly of the Eagles. Currently, the Lancaster Festival and Matt Taylor Kia have teamed up for a unique fundraising opportunity. You can purchase raffle tickets for $25 or five for 100 for a chance to win a 2021 Kia Telluride or 20,000 in cash. The winning ticket will be drawn at the Lancaster Festival Grand Finale on Saturday, July 33rd, 31st. We hope you all can attend a few events this year and help support the Lancaster Festival. You can check out their website for a full listing of dates and events, as this will be a fun-filled week. As our class and presentation comes to an end, our group would like to thank those at the Lancaster Festival and those with the Lancaster Fairfield County Chamber of Commerce for having our team this year. Thank you. Congratulations on completing the Fairfield Leadership Program. We are Team Maywood. My name is Jordy Stringer. I am the Executive Director at the Southeastern Ohio Center for Independent Living here in the city of Lancaster. Oh. My name is Doug Durrett, Fairfield County Economic and Workforce Development uh, Specialist. I am uh, Keith Kumler with Kumler Collision and Automotive. I am Jake Pendleton with the uh, City of Lancaster Stormwater Specialist. I'm Allie Holbrook, personal banker with Vinton County National Bank. I'm Nicole Davis representing Park National Bank. And we had the great opportunity to work with uh, a group that believe is a super underutilized resource here in our community. That resource is Maywood Mission. Um, 
we wrestled with a couple of different ideas uh, in the beginning of this project. In the end, we landed on what we will present to you today, which is a communication plan. The com communication plan offers resources, tools, and ideas that will allow the mission to be able to connect with all the individuals that it seeks to in the community. So uh, throughout this project, we've, uh, we um, started by uh, putting together a project charter and we uh, determined that the vision for this project would be to heighten awareness of the financial relief services and other assistance opportunities through clear communication channels. Uh, and the scope we uh, I want to focus on is internal and external communication and then just some additional tools. Uh, that can be used. And some of the, some of the deliverables are our communication plan. We've got a donor stewardship plan and some print materials uh, in addition to some other strategies. So as we uh, look at the current state of communication uh, at Maywood Mission, we started by focusing on the current communication activities, which are social media, their website, their uh, uh, newsletter, and then the communication uh, from the uh, executive director. And throughout that, that current communication, we've noticed some messages that are being portrayed and it, as it relates to their programs, their community impact, uh, the learning center that they have, uh, and the process of obtaining emergency assistance and that verification process. Uh, and some of the opportunities in their, in their communication are uh, just being able to make the communication more linear, uh, improving the print materials, uh, making their website uh, more uh, visually appealing, more accessible, uh, and um, making sure that community, making sure that the community is aware of the breadth of services that are provided by Maywood Mission. So the, the strategy that we took for this project uh, started with the creating organization, uh, creating organization uh, focus areas. And those focus areas help us to define those communication objectives and then identify the target audiences, uh, which are at the end of the project helps us deliver uh, those communication, deliver on those communication channels and implement those. Some of those focus areas include spiritual care, early intervention, community crisis relief services, and Maywood Market. And at the center of all of those things, we want to make sure that we keep the mission uh, front and center uh, because those focus areas help us, uh, help, us, um, help us to have a clear understanding and delineation between what needs to be communicated and what does not need to be communicated. So some of the objectives are to, to emphasize the spiritual growth. We, we want to make sure that we're making known those financial relief services, inviting partnership and donation, and then we're targeting the public, our donors, uh, the chapel service attendees, our uh, parents, our church, our local churches, and uh, those church members and volunteers. So now that we know uh, what we want to communicate to uh, what the Maywood Mission is and to the community and, and what services they offer, we came up with several core communication channels uh, to do that. First would be general advertising and branding. Um, that would just kind of be their logo and their mission uh, statement and their um, tagline. Uh, from there, we worked on their print media, uh, their brochures, their streamlined their um, mission statement, um, those things that they deliver to the community. We came up with uh, flyer programs uh, to help with how to engage with the Maywood mission, how to get there, what services they offer. Uh, we worked on um, a donor recognition program so that they can re-engage with those uh, people that help uh, volunteer and serve uh, the organization in, in the many um, things that they offer, and then alternative engagement type programs. When they go out and speak into um, engagements, they have uh, an in instant um, card that they can ha have, um, Maywood mission moments where they can use for their social media and uh, their um, print media. Um, 
as we circle back around to their advertising and branding, we came up with help them kind of streamline their, their logo, which you see down in the bottom corner. It's new, it's, it's clean, it's modern. They can use that across their brands, Maywood Mission, Maywood Market, Maywood Chapel. Um, they've come up with a tagline, which is making a difference. They can use that to communicate um, what they're doing in the community. That, that speaks to the value that they add to this community. Now what they need to do is put that on uh, out in front of people. Uh, they do that by bumper stickers and t-shirts. They can sell those t-shirts in their market. They can use those t-shirts for um, gifts for their, um, uh, those people that volunteer. They can put it on mugs. Uh, word of mouth. Uh, they can use um, news programs, um, news media, uh, radio shows. Um, put that signage everywhere. They have a brand new truck. It's all over the sign of their new truck. So when you see that driving through town, you see the Maywood mission. So now that they're visible. Um, but a big area of focus for us was our social media platform. We wanted to make sure that they updated their Facebook program. They had several Facebooks. They wanted to streamline into one. They need to start creating an Instagram and Twitter account and then use the other social medias to engage in those programs. And to help with that, we've come up with a plan that way as well. Um, so one of the most effective ways of getting a social media presence that we came up with was to hire an intern from a local college or university. Both Ohio State and Ohio University uh, both encourage their students to use a website called Handshake. It's a very versatile website that will allow Maywood Mission to reach out to uh, local college and university students in the way that they see fit. It allows them to um, post for paid or unpaid um, paid or unpaid internships as well as any duration and any way of application as well in addition to being able to um, reach out to specific majors as well as specific um, years for the students, whether they be a, a junior, senior, or however they uh, see fit. Alternatively, if they wanted to keep it a little bit more local, um, we have come up with a method to do that as well. Uh, they can reach out directly to Ohio University's Lancaster campus through the social media coordinator at Ohio University, whose name is K Karen Deerdorf. And she is also able to assist with getting um, college credit for the internship itself. So that would be a, an excellent way. We have also um, been able to reach out to a local firm and get a get a quote for a more professional social media service if Maywood Mission chooses to go that that route. As mentioned a moment ago, brochure is one way of communicating as well out to the community. Maywood Missions brochure was in need of updating, and we wanted to create something that would catch your eye and not just be an item that would end up sitting on the kitchen table. Uh, this brochure here states uh, most of what they offer, when they offer it, how and who to reach out to. Um, there's also a little history on the brochure with a quote from the current director. In addition to all of these things that you've heard us talk about, <clears throat> particularly with regard to social media, we probably couldn't emphasize that enough. We wanted to also allow for some of the more traditional methods of communication. Um, the, we have here a flyer that uh, shows you how to get to Maywood. I think everybody needs to be at a place, and so there's unfortunately not uh, always equity in the community with regard to transportation. So we wanted to be able to share that there is opportunities here in the city for individuals who maybe don't have access to a car or who don't otherwise have some other method of transportation, that there are ways that you can get access to these really, really important community services. And if you have ever worked for a nonprofit or you have ever served on a nonprofit board, you know that no director will turn down help or money or volunteers. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to streamline this message for Maywood Mission so that there was a clear communication plan, whether they gave one gift, two gifts, or a major gift, so that there could be an interaction between the executive director of Maywood and also with that donor. It, ha it allows the donor to feel more connected to the mission in a way where they see their dollars at work and they see their time at work and they can see the output of what they're doing and the importance of it. Last thing we did is Jonathan Hanks often speaks to organizations, churches, community events, 
And if you're like me, when you're sitting there, you hear about a cause, but sometimes you walk out and you can have the best of intentions, but you can just forget to respond. So we wanted to capitalize on that moment and capitalize when that mission employee is there speaking to them. So what we did is we developed a little volunteer card. This was actually designed by Martin Barker. And what they will do is on the back of the volunteer card, they will put what they want to do, whether it's volunteer their time, give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. This way, in the moment when they're hearing about the mission, they can pro provide the way in which they can best volunteer or serve the mission. Likewise, we decided with the social media emphasis that you need to hear from the executive director on the regular. And he does this with community engagements and also his newsletter. But there is a generation of people, maybe millennials, that do want to see it on social media. So we developed what's called a missions moment so that Jonathan every month will get on there and tell of what, hap what is happening at the mission and ways in which you can volunteer and actually help that effort that particular month. We do want to give another shout out to Martin Barker because it would not be without him that we have this nice little card. None of us are designers, so we appreciate his time and effort on this card. Minuteman Press also gave us a quote that we shared with Jonathan to get these printed and get them in the hands of the community quickly. Last thing, we just want to thank the Chamber, the efforts of Travis and his team. We want to thank Jonathan and Kathy at the Mission who met with us week after week to help us develop this uh, communication plan and branding project. We want to thank our employers who believed in us to send us to this program. We had a great experience and we appreciate you. Thank you. Congratulations on completing the Fairfield Leadership Program. Hi, my name is Justin Owen, and I'm going to provide some background on how our group was able to assist the Lighthouse. The Lighthouse was founded in 1980 as a domestic violence shelter serving the Lancaster Fairfield County area. Since this time, it has evolved into much more than just a shelter. The Lighthouse offers clients a wide range of services, from transportation and counseling to job placement and legal advocacy. When new leadership was appointed in 2018, the Lighthouse was struggling to keep the doors open. Money was tight, but the Lighthouse worked diligently to ensure clients were never turned away. Over time, these financial constraints had the effect of limiting the Lighthouse's ability to promote its services or expand its presence in the community. Our group is tasked with creating a marketing campaign to address these deficiencies. The proposed marketing campaign is in some sense a rebranding effort aimed at reaching potential clients, distributing educational materials, and establishing a meaningful relationship with the community. If successful, the campaign will not only raise awareness about the Lighthouse, but also increase donations from individuals and local businesses. Our group overcame three unique challenges while creating the marketing campaign. The first challenge was recognizing domestic violence is an uncomfortable subject. There are certain stigmas attached to the issue of domestic violence, making it difficult to discuss with potential clients, schools, and the general public. Our group also realized fundraising efforts may suffer because the subject matter is unpleasant and at times disheartening. But domestic violence shouldn't be ignored. Our group intentionally used positive, relatable image association in our marketing materials to engage the community in advanced fundraising efforts. The second challenge was funding. The amount of funding is always a concern for nonprofit organizations. The Lighthouse is no different. It can always use more money. Our group dug deeper and realized the source of funding can be just as important as the amount. A large portion of the Lighthouse's annual budget comes from federal grants. If these grants are cut off unexpectedly, as they recently were, the Lighthouse has limited options to supplement the anticipated revenue. Our group focused on increasing private donations to diversify the source of funding, reducing the reliance on federal grants. The third challenge was recognizing the different barriers clients face when asking for help. Our group learned about the different reasons a client may hesitate to contact an organization like the Lighthouse. We discovered the underlying theme was one of uncertainty and how the process would affect their families, their jobs, and their finances. 
Our group attempted to address the most common issues in marketing materials in order to minimize this uncertainty. I would like to introduce Janae Miller, who will provide an overview of the group's marketing strategy. Great, thanks Justin. My name is Janae Miller, I'm with Fairfield Medical Center, and I'm going to talk a little bit um, about the overview of our strategy for the Lighthouse. The first thing we decided to do was research. Um, we had discussions with Susan, um, the Lighthouse ex Executive Director. We also um, interviewed, got information from the Lighthouse's board regarding um, what the Lighthouse currently offers, who their audience is, and what their current marketing efforts are. We also interviewed Chief Mike Tessie of the Baltimore Pleasantville Police Department um, to get law enforcement's perspective. We reached out to multiple local school districts to understand what they're currently distributing to students and what their resources are. And we also did a lot of our own online research to find out what other similar organizations are doing for marketing, fundraising. After that, um, we determined that um, we would do a SWOT analysis to kind of give us some direction for the marketing campaign. We determined that the Lighthouse's strengths included uh, the wide array of services and resources they offer to clients to provide a holistic support for victims and their children. They also have a very strong staff, including a large number of victims advocates, um, which allows them to serve a large number of victims. Um, additionally, they partner with a lot of local law, um, agencies, including law enforcement, court systems, school districts, and many other organizations to provide any resources that a victim or their children need. Weaknesses for Lighthouse included, um, due to the recent financial challenges that Justin mentioned, um, marketing and branding have not been a focus for the organization. And while many in the community may be aware of the Lighthouse as a shelter, they may not be as aware of the other services that the Lighthouse offers to clients. Opportunities include equipping schools with the materials and information designed to address domestic violence at a younger age to hopefully avoid future occurrences of violence. And building additional awareness and support with local individuals and businesses, including financial support. And highlighting potential client, to potential clients that the Lighthouse is more than a shelter, and even if they don't need um, the shelter, that there are additional resources and ways the Lighthouse can support them. Finally, threats. Um, as Justin mentioned, ongoing going funding challenges, including cuts in federal grant funds, have become a very serious issue for the organization, which some of my teammates will address. Um, the stigma around domestic violence can make it very difficult for potential clients to receive the help they need and for the Lighthouse to receive support from the local community. And finally, the barriers facing victims um, that are preventing them from leaving an abusive situation um, really are a big threat to the organization. And those barriers include everything from financial worries, concern about losing their children, even um, COVID-19 safety. So after analyzing that information, when we were planning our strategy, um, we determined the best way that we could help the Lighthouse um, was by creating a marketing campaign um, using targeted messages and delivery methods to um, educate and spread awareness of the Lighthouse to several different audiences while working in that limited budget um, due to the funding decreases. And Maureen is now gonna tell you a little bit more about those target audiences. Thank you, Janae. I'm Maureen Ogilvy. I work at Lancaster Bingo, and I'm gonna to speak to you a bit about how we identified the target audiences. A key component of our project was to identify the target audiences and create customized marketing and educational content for each intended audience. To accomplish this, we had to recognize the various groups of adults, teens, and children who could benefit from knowledge and awareness of the Lighthouse as well as those who could help support the Lighthouse's mission on a community level. We wanted to create content for the Lighthouse that would reach each respective audience with a meaningful message. The Lighthouse of Lancaster is dedicated to promoting the existence of a safe and peaceful home and family life environment through quality services focused on prevention, education, and treatment of family violence. We identified three broad groups. First, potential clients. One of our main goals in 
in customizing content for potential clients is to raise the public's awareness of the array of services offered by the Lighthouse. We wanted to highlight that the Lighthouse serves as a resource to end domestic violence, sexual assault, dating violence, and protect and prevent victims of stalking for residents living in Fairfield, Hocking, and Perry County. The Lighthouse is a secure shelter and so much more. We worked on content that would provide meaningful data points. Our goal is to speak to potential clients about the elements of uncertainty by extending assurances that the Lighthouse has resources to provide safe, private, free services to help individuals and their families impacted by domestic violence. Next, students. The next area of opportunity for education and awareness we identified as students. The Lighthouse aims to help area schools understand the importance of educating students, teachers, and staff on the concept of domestic and dating violence. Our goal is to provide materials that will help area schools disseminate information about these behaviors. Providing education and resources to students aims at stopping violent behaviors before it begins. The Lighthouse's educational marketing materials will promote strategies that foster healthy behaviors in relationships, encourage youth to do, report domestic violence to a trusted adult, and dispel myths surrounding the victims and perpetrators of domestic violence. Lastly, the general public. It is our intention through a variety of marketing resources to share the Lighthouse's mission with the general public. We want the residents of Fairfield and surrounding counties to know. The Lighthouse supports the life-saving and life-changing programs aimed at addressing domestic and sexual violence. The Lighthouse works diligently to keep their programs viable in alignment with the changes in law and societal norms, while being mindful of current funding mechanisms. The Lighthouse has played a major role in providing a safe place for victims of domestic violence and their children in our communities and, and surrounding area communities. Although based in Fairfield County, the Lighthouse serves neighboring counties that do not have domestic violence services available. To help ensure the public is familiar with the Lighthouse, its services, and the importance to the community, we focused on establishing branding that familiarizes the community with the Lighthouse's work, creating, contact, creating content that creates a personal relationship with the local community, and most importantly for the vitality of this organization, make the public aware of the financial and other needs of the Lighthouse ways they can support, promote, and donate to the Lighthouse. With that, I introduce Judy Warrior. Judy is going to discuss our group's plans and objectives. Thanks, Maureen. So after determining our targeted audiences, we focused on our plan objectives and what we could deliver as tools for those objectives. In our research, we found that we should stray away from negative or scary imagery. Positive images that show uplifting, aspirational images of happy families could actually result in a better response. When choosing our media, we found that we needed to ensure that key messages, calls to action, and delivery methods would speak to the target audience. We also wanted to ensure that our audience is aware of all the Lighthouse has to offer. They have a full range of services available, not just for clients that need emergency shelter. With all of this in mind, we had to take into account that the Lighthouse has a very limited budget. The following items were created to help convey their message. One of the main items requested by the Lighthouse for this project was an updated brochure. We have created a new brochure highlighting the Lighthouse's services for the potential clients and also to help educate the public. You will see in all of the graphics that we tried to create a consistent color scheme and theme, hoping to create a consistent brand to help the community recognize them more easily. One of the struggles with getting the word out to the victims of domestic abuse is that they need to have discrete ways to find and keep the information. It can be dangerous for the victim to have any physical trace of the information with them. We created a sticker design that, cre that can be used in various places such as business stores, bathroom stalls, and doctor's offices that will provide that contact information for the Lighthouse. The stickers will provide a quick, easy way for anyone to be reminded of their services. 
In our research, we found that the schools didn't really have many resource, resources regarding the lighthouse. As mentioned earlier, Sheriff Tessie stressed the importance of educating school-age individuals to bring awareness to the domestic and dating violence. So, in efforts to help educate the school-age demographic, we will provide a series of educating, educational dating violence and acceptable behavior posters targeted to junior high and high school students. The posters can be placed in all of our schools. Social media is a low-cost way to engage the public and potential victims. The Lighthouse currently has presence on multiple social media platforms. So we have created graphics that can be used throughout the year and can even be scheduled in advance so that it is easy to maintain. We comprise multiple options for billboards to utilize if, they, if and when they would like. Our team has negotiated a discounted monthly rate for the Lighthouse with Nauman. They can choose when they would like to utilize that billboard. And finally, a donor card. In efforts to gather much needed donations to the Lighthouse, we have designed a donor card that highlights the work that the Lighthouse does in the local community and ways to contribute to their cause. And as we've stated, with a very limited budget now available, we do have offers to help cover the cost of some of these efforts. We anticipate that we can get them started with a supply of these items without hurting their current budget. Hopefully, with better ways to bring attention to the Lighthouse, this will in turn help their fundraising efforts. Our thanks to Janae for all of her work with, and marketing expertise with each of these items. And now Kayla will explain what we would suggest for future planning. So the Lighthouse unfortunately has experienced a significant funding cut from one of their largest funding sources. It is expected that in a year or two this funding source will be reinstated, but until then the Lighthouse is tasked with finding a new funding source. The Lighthouse has several fundraisers throughout a typical year, but due to COVID a lot of them were not able to be held this year. One of their biggest revenues was a fashion show that they hold every March and due to COVID was not able to be held this year. Another obstacle we hit when looking for fundraising ideas is the Lighthouse, unfortunately, is in a blackout period, which is about four months out of the year that they cannot advertise and they cannot campaign. Um, sorry. We felt the best recommendations for increasing future funds would be by educating and promoting awareness for the Lighthouse and all of its services that it has to offer to the public. By making the public more aware of this amazing resource in our community, we hope that the individuals and the local business donations will increase. We also recommend by strengthening local relationships, especially with the health care providers and local law enforcement that the, in the local schools, that this will help expand the awareness of the Lighthouse. We hope by expanding these relationships, there will be an opportunity to include um, additional agencies and expanding the future fundraisers for effort. Recently, Sheriff Tussie from Baltimore Sheriff Department was able to raise $2,000 for the Lighthouse through his fundraiser called Beard for Bucks, where deputies were encouraged to neatly grow their beards until, and could not shave them until they raised $100. The last recommendation that we have is for the um, Lighthouse to expand their online education efforts. By having an online platform, it is much easier to provide a lot of information that anyone can access at any time. It would also be a great way to advertise current fundraisers and events that benefit the Lighthouse. By using an electronic newsletter for donors, it cuts the cost of a physical letter and it also helps keep the relationship with the donor. This also allows the donor to see how much their donations truly help the victims of domestic abuse. We hope all these materials and recommendations that we have provided today are able to help the Lighthouse's cause and help the Lighthouse to be able to reach more of the community and so that more victims of domestic violence can become survivors. We would like to thank Susan Nixon Stoughton and her board for all of their investment and their time and for this cause. We would like to thank Travis Markwood, Cheryl Barber, David Ohl, and the rest of the Lancaster Fairfield County Chamber of Commerce. And a huge thank you to all of our employers who sponsored each of us and believed in each of us for this program. Thank you.
congratulations on completing the Fairfield Leadership Program. Hi, I'm Pamela Stump, and I'm going to introduce you to our group. Rusty Asbell, Kim Browning, Kelson Henwood, Julia Taylor, and Donnell King. Together, we worked with our nonprofit organization, Bottoms Up Diaper Drive. Together, we, we worked to create the event, the world's largest diaper drive. Our team was presented the goals of raising awareness through marketing, as well as building a sustainable inventory of diapers and wipes for pre present and future needs within the community. So how we came up with this idea, our original idea was to hold a citywide diaper drive with multiple locations throughout Lancaster. The idea has since expanded and flourished to reach beyond just Lancaster and Fairfield County to become not only the city's largest diaper drive, but to become the world's largest diaper drive, which is when we realized that meant to collect 250,000 diapers. Our initial steps was to figure out the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, and the how. So figuring out the details, the who would be our bottoms up diaper drive nonprofit organization. The what would be a multiple location diaper drive that would become the world's largest diaper drive with collecting over 250,000 diapers. The when we decided to hold an event outdoors in the spring, which ultimately became Saturday, May 1st, 2021, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The where, we have four parking lots drop-off locations in Lancaster, the Tree Church, Job and Family Services, Fairfield Christian Church, and the Tractor Supply on East Main Street. The why that we're doing this is to collect diapers for those in need in our community, as well as increased brand recognition. The how we plan to do this is to get the community involved through diaper drives, sponsorships, promotions, volunteers, donations, and etc. So our team played many roles in planning this event on March for, on May 1st. We hosted internal diaper drives. We marketed, we promoted, and we recruited volunteers and sponsors. In planning stages, we met bi-monthly via Zoom. Our team met with Shara Barber, Joe Holbrook, Tim and Joanne Walsh from Bottoms Up. Another pivotal part of this project was the community engagement. One of our first steps was obviously booking our four main location sites for the May 1st event. These location sites included Fairfield Christian Church, the Tree Church, uh, tractor supply on Main Street, as well as the job and family services. And these four locations we would do, we're going to do drive through drop off. So all of these will be in their parking lots. Um, the next step was getting organizations, churches, businesses, and other groups and clubs involved in doing diaper drives leading up to our May 1st event. So this involved having a church call list where we were literally just calling all these churches in the area to see if they were interested in holding drives for us ahead of time. Um, getting groups like the Young Professionals of Lancaster involved with their own drive as well as just helping us get the word out the Interact Club at Lancaster High School, our own places of employment, as well as at car dealerships and over 60 other organizations. And we also had families signed up to hold their own drives. We also spoke at community meetings and events. This included the morning and afternoon Rotary Club meetings, the Fairfield Virtual Community, um, Lancaster United Brethren Church, and the Kiwanis. We would speak at these meetings again just to get the word out and to help promote this event. So some photos we have here kind of show our efforts in that as well. We have a poster for the Fairfield uh, virtual community meeting that we spoke at. We have a promotional flyer from the Young Professionals of Lancaster to promote the diaper drive. Um, we have a photo of some Rotarians and the diapers that they've donated. 
Um, we have a photo of the, at the bottom left, we have a photo of the Lancaster High School Interact Club and their uh, diapers that they donated. And like I said, it wasn't just inter um, Interact and other clubs and organizations. We also had other communities and neighborhoods getting involved. At near the bottom right, we have the photo with the kids in the thermometer uh, drawing. They have, that was from a neighborhood that together collected over 2,000 diapers. And then at the far bottom right, we have another school that got involved, St. Bernadette Catholic School, that also held their own diaper drive for us. Okay, so with digital marketing, we created a website to inform uh, the public for specific information for the diaper drive, which was called the world's largest diaper drive.org. We created digital flyers like the Be Part of History flyer and the How to Diaper Drive flyer. We targeted social media like we created a Facebook page, uh, posted on Instagram. We also brainstormed for all our supporters, social media, and the hashtag World's Largest Diaper Drive, which allowed us to reach the top five cities surrounding Fairfield County, which is Lancaster, Columbus, Pickerington, Westerville, and Logan. Here are some of the flyers that we came up with. The world's largest diaper drive also included the QR code for more inf locations and um, more information. The flyers were distributed by our team to local businesses for display. We partnered with Nick's Pizza, who placed flyers on every pizza that was sold um, for the community involvement, asking for sponsors, volunteers, and by making donations. We wrote a press release and submitted the event as a story, and it was picked up by the Chillicothe Gazette, Lancaster Living Magazine. The Eagle Gazette featured Joe Welsh with, and Bottoms Up in two of their columns, County Connections, and the Ace of Trades. Good Day Columbus also highlighted Bottoms Up in their partnership with Hawking Hills Tiny Houses. We, were also, we also had several public announcements, service announcements with The Wolf, WLOH, 90.9 The River, and 98.9 Bruce Hooley Show had a call-a-thon that took donations, um, which also included some corporate sponsors and matches. Um, we had Buffalo Wild Wings, who sponsored a billboard for us. Rusty met with Mayor David Scheffler, resulting in him proclaiming May 1st as the world's largest diaper drive day. Tim Walsh was also in contact with the governor's office, office, who also made this proclamation. Another part of the development of this event was recruiting um, the, and placing our 79 volunteers, which includes at least six families. We were able to recruit through social media, emails, flyers, and having call, call to action meetings with our coworkers. Through emails, phone calls, and we were able to place all of our volunteers through and have plenty of coverage at all time slots in each location. For each location, we have a coordinator who is responsible for the flow of traffic of the day, and we have counters and drivers who will be taking the donations to um, the hub at Connections West. Bob Boyd Ford and Buckeye Toyota have donated the use of four vans that we will be able to place one at each location to drop off the diapers. So what we learned, um, I speak for our team and probably speak for the, uh, the entire group of the Fairfield leadership team that uh, we learned quite a bit. This entire process, especially pertaining to our local nonprofits and uh, how many nonprofits there are within Lancaster and Fairfield County and how diverse they are. How the heart of this city is to meet the needs of those that are in need. And as, I, as we continue to look, at our leadership team and what we've done, I can say that one of the big experiences that I had personally was um, that by allowing individuals to actually come together and focus on their strengths, history can and will be made. So what's to come? 
The world's largest diving drive is happening tomorrow. May 1st, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. All those that are watching, grateful leadership team, David Ull, Travis Markwood, Charles Barber, I implore you right now, if you have not yet done so, to come and be a part of history. Come out and see us. From 10 to 4, you can drop off diapers. You can come to any one of those four locations, Job and Family Services, the Tree Church, Fairfield Christian Church, and Trash Supply East. So I implore you to come out and be a part of history. Thank you. Congratulations on completing the Fairfield Leadership Program. Well, that concludes our, uh, our program today. I appreciate everyone who's tuned in to, uh, to watch these fantastic presentations. I, ho I hope from seeing the work that's been done, um, you can see how much work uh, these, uh, these teams have put in and, and, and hopefully what a value our nonprofits find our Fairfield Leadership Program to be. Um, do again want to thank all our participants. Very proud of the work that they've done with our nonprofits and the time that they've spent with the program. I want to thank their employers for allowing us to have their time uh, and for sponsoring them in the program. Uh, that wraps up today. Uh, we hope to see you at our next event in person. Uh, until then, be safe.